Hi, you've tuned in to CKUW 95.9 FM here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I am the host, Tammy Wolf of Truth Before Reconciliation. This is actually our final episode for uh, 2021. Um, I'm here with Tina Anderson. Uh, she is a current student at Red River College and also a youth mentor. We are going to have a conversation about, uh, I guess, the year's events, looking back at the year's events um, in regards to truth and reconciliation here in Canada, um, a super pivotal year. So I'd like to welcome you, Tina. Did Maybe you can start by introducing yourself for the listeners. Hi, my name is Tina Anderson, um, and I'll introduce myself in my traditional name, Tamse Aske Tuku Mikanakaskew. My name is Green Turtle Woman, and I come from the Eagle Clan, and today I'm excited to be here with Tammy to, dis <laughs> Sorry, to discuss the events that have passed throughout this year and like you said it's pivotal and yeah I'm from South Indian Lake I'm Cree I'm a sun dancer of five years and I take a lot of pride in my culture and I'm here for the future generations thanks Tina uh, so happy to have you here to have this super important conversation um, definitely, as I mentioned, a super pivotal year in regards to uh, truth and reconciliation. A lot of truths have been exposed this year. Um, but I guess I kind of wanted to start maybe even just by talking about last year, because I know for myself, I kind of feel like this year's events are very much tied to things that happened last year. Um, number one, you know, the pandemic, we're still currently now December 2021 we're still currently in a world pandemic um now we're looking at the new this new Omicron uh variant um and so last year I feel you know March 2020 things shut down and you know I feel like a few things kind of popped up in regards to mm -hmm. what I want to say set the stage for the events that happened this year so um this this world pandemic happened I feel like TikTok almost had like a, a hand in this because TikTok people everybody was shut up in their homes um locked the doors almost throwing the keys away and everybody all they were looking at was social media they were they, TikTok was a huge thing that came out and June 2020 Black Lives Matter happened and so I feel like that event was very pivotal. I feel like um, that movement spurred, um, you know, George Floyd, the death of George, George Floyd, um, for those of you who don't know, um, you know, he was killed by police. Um, and, and even here locally in Winnipeg, um, there were three um, police caused deaths of indigenous people. Um, and so I, I kind of wanted to start with the conversation with you with with that in regards to, you know, so social justice. Um, I feel like that kind of opened the door. So so what are your thoughts on social justice, on that social justice movement that kind of opened the door for people to kind of start looking more at social justice issues? Um, that was really devastating to see. And... I think, I think that people constantly paint a picture of like black lives not mattering, that right. it just, it's just a normal thing. But what took, but what took place in that video was George, was George Floyd crying out for his mom. Right. I, I think that's what woke up a lot of people to realizing that they're, they're, they are human beings and their lives do matter. Definitely, I feel like, um, yeah, I mean, it's a haunting image, you know, a grown man crying out for his mother. And I mean, it, it really goes to show, and, and, you know, I mean, you kind of, I guess you kind of nodded towards it, that it's a normalized thing, you know, police abuses on 
uh, I want to say BIPOC people, people of color, um, is a normalized thing. I mentioned here in Winnipeg, we had three deaths by caused by police here in Winnipeg. Um, and so really, um, that social justice issue, you know, looking at how does that how did that make you feel? Like, did you feel like, because um, I mean, they always say that sometimes the, the worst things need to happen for for I, I want to say good things to happen after, right? So how did that make you feel? Um, I was enraged because I've seen it. I've, I've paid attention to it for a very long time. Right. And like, I totally believe that something really bad has to happen. And like, it got to the point where body cams were being used, having right. to be used. But like, look at what's happening now with those. Those are being controlled through social media and like everything. I don't know. It just, it pisses me off. Well, I know one of the things that they talked about was um, defunding the police. Mm -hmm. And I know here specifically in Winnipeg, they talked about the body cams. You mentioned body cams. Yeah. And a lot of like, I think it's a split vote. I think there's half of the people are saying like, no, like, why are we putting money? This defund the police exactly that like, I, I can agree with that. But then on the other hand, I, I see the argument as well of like, we need to be able to see what the police are doing, right? We need those body cams to see. So I mean, like, how do you feel about that? Um, I think like that split is like split between us, like the same people that say like, oh, you should be listening to the police, like you should be like told what to do. And meanwhile, half the time they, they tell you to do something and then they'll immediately tell you something else to do. And then guns are drawn and like triggers are pulled. Right. And defunding them, I, I'm on that side. It right. should be going towards our education, our schools, and right. our hospitals and our health. Community, care. yeah. Community led initiatives, grassroots movements, um, 100%. I, I, completely, I completely agree with that. Uh, so, I mean, I guess moving more so towards, you know, this year. So I know, like I said, I said, we were going to have a conversation about specifically 2021. So I feel like those things spurred what happened this year. So, so 2021, um, you know, those social justice issues um, that, that, you know, continued to happen. I mean, it kind of came to a head last year with George, George Floyd and Black Lives Matter. And it was like a cross right? Like this was in, um, this was like worldwide news. Yeah. So this year, May um, of this year, um, we, we did find, um, you know, there were the findings at the Kamloops Residential School, the 215, one, uh, 215 children were found um, in a mass grave at that residential school. Um, and so, I feel like that was a pivotal, you know, turning point for, for everyone, not just in Canada here, but this was worldwide news. We are now at, you know, uh, I think place, I think we're even at like um, the United Nations talking about justice for that. So what are your thoughts on that, on those findings? They needed to happen and they couldn't have happened at a better time because slowly but surely the like we're gathering as a global to stand up to these issues and i'm just it's devastating but it needed to happen and i'm like really grateful that it happened right yeah yeah well that's what i mentioned too right is that sometimes the worst things need to happen for good things to happen. And that's kind of why I mentioned Black Lives Matter, because I feel like that kind of spurred that movement. And so, um, you know, really focusing on, on that, you know, that those findings this year, that's what we talk about here on Truth Before Reconciliation. We talk about truth mm -hmm. and really that truth needed to be highlighted. It needed to be shown. Um, I, I honestly feel for myself, um, 
all year this year, I kept saying, what a time to be alive as an Indigenous woman. I'm just, I've been doing this work for so many years. And honestly, to, to go um, shopping at, at my local Safeway and be standing in line and see on the front page of the news pictures of our babies, uh, you know, at residential school on the front page of the news um, and seeing those headlines that you can't turn away now, right? So, so the things that, you know, I've been talking about for, for 10, 15 years, people can't deny the truth anymore. So how does, how did that make you feel? That, it made me happy because like, the stuff, the Black Lives Matter, the Black Lives, like, it matters, right, obviously. Right. And that's them, that is them, like, that's the part where they brought, they enslaved, they enslaved them and brought them to right. a real island, right? Oh, I think I lost you. Still lost. Oh, okay. there we go. I'm sorry. Technical difficulties here. We we'll we'll always roll with the technical difficulties. Okay, where did I get cut off? Um, you were talking about Black Lives Matter and about the enslavement of of them coming and being brought to Turtle Island. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then the residential schools. What they did to us is being uncovered. So it's being shown what the government and what these colonizers are, have done and what they're capable of doing, but only in written form now. So it's time for us to like dismantle what they're trying to do, which, which is like erase what they've done to us. Right. We're, we're coming together as a collective to like, you know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah, come together as one and unite because I mean we can see so many similarities between the Black Lives Matter movement and the Indigenous rights movement. Yeah. And I mean, I think too, I think there's a lot of um, misconceptions by people around the world. You know, when Black Lives Matter happened, people thought that was a brand new movement. Wrong. This is a, this is you know going back to um, you know the 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 rights Black movement. Right, the Black Panthers and um, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement has been happening for years and years and years, like all the way to like segregation, where they had, you know, uh, you know, the segregation of black people can only go to these schools and white people can only go to these schools. You can't go into stores if you were a black person. Like those are real truths that happened in America. Um, and I mean, I want to say somewhat even here in, in Canada, I remember doing a paper um, in my undergrad degree where, where we um, learned about, you know, they would stop once the Emancipation Proclamation happened and slavery was, was no longer, they couldn't do that anymore. They used to stop Black people at the border and stop them from entering Canada because ca Canadians didn't want them here. Um, and so, I mean, like we can see um, so many similarities in um I guess I want to say the negative stereotypes, the, the harsh treatment, um, I mean, policing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I guess when you talk about, um, you know, these, this movement, I feel like you're, you really gave us a good segue into, I want to say, the next um, kind of event that happened this year in Canada, um, which was for July 1st. So there was the Cancel Canada, Canada Day movement. Um, so how did you, like, what, what were the events that you partic um, partook in that day or, or what, um, how did you, I guess, get involved with that? Uh, I haven't celebrated Canada Day in a long time. So it was actually like a grieving day for me and to see some people like still all celebratory and like, you know what I mean? So it was mm -hmm. kind of hard to deal with that on that day because I've always felt the, like that way about Canada Day but right. with that happening and people still wanting to continue it just like you know 
There needs to be awareness, way more awareness, and I'm glad that it's happening. And like you said, like it's a great time to be alive because I always got those like feelings, like strong feelings, you know, like it's unfolding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. And as to with the um, the segregation and everything, there was a point in time where with the slavery, we wouldn't have made it, we wouldn't have survived our genocide if it wasn't for the black people. Right. Yeah, our most powerful people and leaders would gather in, in secrecy from all over Turtle Island and they'd gather and they would foretell their prophecies. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't have survived if it wasn't for our black brothers and sisters because we would have been wiped out if it wasn't for them. They, they took on a lot for us Mm -hmm. in, order, in order for us not to be killed. So right. I have like the utmost respect and love for them automatically always have as soon as I learned about this teaching. For sure. With the Black Lives Matter movement, even with the AIM, the American Indian movement, right. we, we learned that from the Black Panthers. Right. Yeah. And so like when they, when they learn to stand up for themselves, we, we like, we follow because black people are the most powerful people in the world, just being honest. And we can really see that support, right? That support from them on say like Cancel Canada Day. The show out for that was huge. We saw, and I mean, it wasn't just uh, black people who showed up. Um, it was like, you could see, like I went to the event that was on, um, I think they had the March um, going down Portage Avenue just huge amounts of people and everybody wearing their orange shirts. Just um, what a powerful moment. And, and when you mention, um, you know, like that you didn't, that you didn't honor, I guess, Canada Day or you didn't celebrate Canada Day in the past, the past years, I'm always remembered of like 150 years, like Canada's 150 years. I remember that day and I remember seeing posters and it, the same thing, what you said, it, I felt like it was a solemn day for me is that, you know, Canada Day is really honoring you know, like t this year we learned about the children. I think the number now is like over um, 7,000. I think it's like nearly 8,000 children that were found in mass graves in residential schools across Canada. Mm -hmm. And so I mean to sit and say, oh, I'm going to, you know, celebrate Canada Day is, is really the genocide of Indigenous people. That's what this, this country was built on. Yeah. Um, so I guess maybe moving towards um, the last kind of event that I wanted to touch on today was um, Orange Shirt Day, oh. the September 30th. So did you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, I actually just started my, my job at Polo Park for the Indigenous, Appar no, Indigenous Nathan, Nathan, Na Nations Apparel Company. I know. Okay. Yeah. I know. I know. Yes. Yeah. So I was working orange shirt that day and like the lineup, like yeah. wrapped around the whole. Hike. I was there. Were you? I would have bought all my shirts from there. On that day? Yes. Oh my God. Okay. I was, I was at the front and I was helping. Yeah, it was the day before. I don't know. I think it was the day before. Okay. Yeah. But it was crazy busy, like crazy busy. And like a lot of like, a lot of emotions went through me that day. Like I was sad that I couldn't be a part of the march and everything. Right. But I was still doing my part. And um, I had a bit of mixed feelings because you could tell who was like genuine about their support and everything. Right. You know? And then part of me wondered if like, are they doing this because it became a trend? Right. So that those were my feelings of it. I feel I had those same similar feelings and and I know earlier too once again you you talked about um you felt sad on Canada Day right it's like not a day that you celebrated and and it was it was a really I want to say kind of odd feeling for me because because I'm always interested in attending Indigenous rights movements um you know activism all of these things like that's why I do this show 
Um, you know, I mentioned earlier, I've, I've been talking about truth and reconciliation for, for like 10, 10 plus years, like before the TRC came out with their report and the 94 calls to action. Um, and so it's always been a thing for me. And on September 30th, you know, they were having the powwow at um, St. John's. St. John's Park. And I was super excited and I wanted to like my daughter dances too. Um, she wasn't dancing that day, but um, we went down there and I was really excited to just like, yes, I love powwow and I love hearing the drum. And mm -hmm. honestly, the amount of people that were there, I felt really weird. And I, and I, and I don't, at the time I didn't, I, I felt weird because I felt like as if I should have been happy to see so much support from so many people, but something wasn't sitting right with me. And I just felt like I couldn't get near the drum. I could hardly, like, I mean, I heard the, the power music playing, but I couldn't get into the tent where everybody was dancing and they were drumming and singing because there were so many people and they just kept coming and coming and coming. And it was like, a sea of orange like even I felt like even more so more than cancel Canada Day on July 1st because I was there at that too and I didn't understand why I felt the way that I felt until the end of the day and it was just like my spirit was was telling me something I felt like my spirit was telling me something that day and and it was almost as if the same thing that you had mentioned about are people just jumping on the bandwagon and that was my final thought of the day was that are people just going to wear their sh their orange shirts today on September 30th now that they've made it a national holiday and so we're going to put all of our shirts away and we're not going to wear them again until next year on September 30th and for me I never put my orange shirt away mm -hmm. you know I I'm a consultant I do a lot of work I do a lot of talks on truth and reconciliation and I do this radio show and I also, you know, deal with my Indigenous trauma. That's something that I can't, you know, take off and put away until next year. Um, so, I mean, what's your thoughts? What's your thoughts on that? I feel like because it was uncovered back to Kamloops, that it was, an, it was uncovered. There was no other, like you said, there's no going back. It's out there. And we weren't even, we weren't even accepted funding to do the uncovering. We're doing it ourselves. So right. there's, no, there's no going back, you know, we're going to find them. But also at the same time, it's just like, it's like putting makeup on a pig, you know, like, oh, right. well, there's, there's no, there's no going back now. So let's, let's throw on a holiday. Let's, let's open the door for them to think that like, it's okay to grieve like grieve what we did, but, right. but there's actually people who are grieving it. Like my, my, I myself am a first generation residential school survivor. So right. um, like just giving us a holiday is like nothing is it's nothing, honestly, in my eyes with, like you said, we can't, we can't take it off and put it, put it away for next year. We go mm -hmm every day and then when we go out in public and stuff we get watched when we shop we get looks from even from mm -hmm. um immigration immigrant immigrants that have right. come, they inherit their their colonized mind stereotypes right yeah. and it's just like where do you get this audacity from like do you know do you know what we've been through so that you're able to come here and like leave what they're doing to your land like don't don't do that to us you know, there's a lot. Yeah, there, there is a lot of I feel like, well, I mean, I guess that's what, you know, this whole year did was yeah. really uncover that where we're able to now as Indigenous people, speak our truths, yeah. honor our truths, honor those truths. You know, you mentioned you're, you're a first generation residential school survivor, my daughter as well. My daughter is here because her gra grandfather survived residential school. You know, I, my fa whole family has a long history of the 60s scoop. I was raised in the child welfare system. My daughter's the first generation in our family, first child in our family not to be apprehended by the child welfare system. You know, they're giving out all these payouts. The government's gave, giving out all these payouts. But I mean, what is that really doing or accomplishing in, in regards to our Indigenous communities or even, you know, myself? 
Like Mm -hmm. if they give me money, how is that going to benefit me? Or how is that going to help me? Because I'm not going to be able to just tuck my traumas away and put them away because you paid me money. That's, you know, um, yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's definitely a lot, a lot of truths being uncovered. Yeah. I also feel like that payout, that payout is like a setup to fail. Like it's a setup because the majority of our residential school survivors are homeless on the street or they have children who battle right. addictions very, very badly. And that kind of money could easily destroy a person. Right. Easily. Well, I think one of the misconceptions too, is that what people don't realize is that those payouts are basically the government is, is getting people to sign away their rights to, to, for further generations to sue Mm -hmm. for those traumas or for, to sue for the negative, um, I guess the negative, um, things that have happened to indigenous people due to residential schools or due to the 60s scoop or due to the millennium scoop that's why all these lawsuits are coming out because as soon as you get your payout and you sign your your life well I want to say you're signing your life away um your children and your children's children's children won't be eligible for any of that from the government because the government will say oh well you know we've already paid you out so we don't And it's really has to do with liability. It really has to do with legalities. Right. And, Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people, the misconception is, is that people don't really recognize that or know that what they're signing there. I mean, I haven't gotten payouts, but, um, when it comes to that $5 a year, right. Yeah, Yeah. definitely the treaty, uh, annuity payments for sure. Um, but I mean, there's just so much, um, but I do feel like we're, we're close to the end of the show here. So I thought maybe I would ask you about your biggest takeaway from this year. My biggest takeaway with, I was just thinking of that this morning um, because of like all the like restrictions and the lockdowns and whatever, right. like checkers, all of that, like being taken away on social media. Right. I feel like we need to create a new platform for things to be seen and heard and like be aware of that what's going on so I really hope that something new comes out that won't have all this like restrictions and like we can't see what the government or the police or anything is like going on right and I hope that more organizations and stuff like that have like healing available to us right more people step up to the plate and stop being like scared of their gifts definitely I definitely feel like this that, that's that's a huge takeaway for me this year as well is that um I mentioned earlier about you know kind of giving us all space to like honor our truths um that's, that's, that's where I'm at with this year is that, and you know, just what a time to be alive. I feel like there's a lot of positives. We, I guess we didn't really have, we don't really have enough time. I maybe should have done a two part series um, because there's so many good things that happen. Like um, the boom in indigenous um, like clothing, uh, beadwork designs, like all of these things. Um, I know my business is booming um, with that. And, and just like to see, people what I always say is that like if people could only see how beautiful our indigenous culture is and that's really what I feel like I took away from this year was that people are just like they're loving it they're honoring it they're and they're and they're supporting us right Mm -hmm. um non-indigenous non-indigenous people um and then also I think the connection of indigenous people like across Turtle Island is just like yeah. so good so yeah I um I totally feel feel that um and I really think that that is healing yeah. in itself that right there is just um and then I also want to say like reconciliation and action um when you see healing when you see uh non-indigenous people supporting indigenous people that's reconciliation and action so um one last question um suggestions so what do you what are your suggestions for the listeners out there who want to get involved to try to support um, either truth or reconciliation? 
in their community? Um, reach out to us, talk to us, join us. Like we need you, you know? We're Definitely. stronger, we're united. So it's time like we change this world for the better for our future generations, right? And don't just wait until September 30th yeah, exactly. or don't just wait until Cancel Canada Day on July 1st, every day. If you see Indigenous people, you mentioned, you know, a lot of our population is, is on the street. If you see people, homeless people on the street, say hello, wave, acknowledge them. Yeah. Honor them as human beings, right? The respect that they deserve. Um, what a wonderful suggestion, Tina. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you so much for being here today. I'm so, I'm so happy that you could come and have a, a, this really super important conversation with me today. Yes, thank you for having me. So this has been Truth Before Reconciliation with Tammy Wolf. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in this year, la our last show for 2021. Um, please do come back in the new year. We'll have some new uh, programming for you guys to listen to. Um, so thanks so much for joining us ag again here on Truth Before Reconciliation. You are still listening to CKUW 95.9 FM here in Winnipeg, Manitoba on Treaty 1 Territory. Um, happy New Year and uh, be safe out there, guys.